stage is set here in a 1 1 game and Ronnie it's going to be Craig Kimbrell the Phillies closer on the mound in this tie game of the night. Well this season he has not allowed a run versus the Diamondbacks. But here we go three and two. Kimbrell fires and it's ball four. Perdomo draws the walk. The bases are loaded and the Diamondbacks hottest hitter is coming up. He gave me a walk. And I said, well, yes, that, that was what I do for him. It really felt like he was going to do it. Arizona could not have a better option at the plate than Cattell Marte. A lo mejor la gente no lo, no lo ve como, como nosotros que lo vemos todos los días, el gran pelotero que es. Fue nuestro, nuestro todo en este playo. 289 hitter with three grand slams in his career. Kimbrell deals it on one. That's into center field. It's down. In the score is Smith. And the Diamondbacks walk off the Phillies in game three. I mean, he was hot the whole playoffs, so it just seemed like he was really going to get it done. And, you know, as you're kind of running towards home play, you know, as the winning run, you know you've won the game. Uh, just kind of like looking around and taking it in as like a once in a lifetime experience and then obviously making sure you touch on play. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw that that play sit, I start running behind him. Cattell Marte takes a victory lap! Just an incredible piece of hitting, uh, muscles it out in the center field and then, you know, the chase was on, go, go hunt him down and, and celebrate. <laughs> NLCS in a, in a game they had to have. Yeah, I, I after that game, um, I told the guys, I yelled it about as loud as I could. At 2 0, you feel like you're down and out, but at 2 1, I said, it just got real, boys. It just got real. We're right back in. Listen, anything can happen tomorrow. So be ready to play your finest game tomorrow. And obviously, we know what happened. <laughs> We may not see him long, but it's Joe Mantiply, the opener for this game four. It's definitely different than being like a, an actual starter. Um, I kind of knew who I was going to face. Just try to get us back in the dugout and, and give the team some good energy going into our first at-bats. There's a spinner, and it's a cold strike three. And that's how we started in game four. And Mantiply... Off to a good start. Turner was not caught stealing all year. And he's off. Go to first. Snap go to second. And, and officially a caught stealing. One two pitch. Harper on the ground. Gobbled up by Marte. Last night's hero. And it's a three batter inning for Joe Manaply. Trying to get us to the point where we can, you know, make the first first blow and then uh, you know pass the baton to the next guy. Rio steals a 1-2, and that one is deep to left field. Real Muto sending it back to the wall. He makes a catch. A great leaping catch. Across the diamond, high throw. Harper cannot get the tag down. Emmanuel Rivera. That wall line, center field, a base hit. In the score is Walker. Emmanuel Rivera delivers with a clutch hit early. Tough play here for Turner. Marte speeding down the line. He's in there. 2-2, and he shoots one to right field, a base hit. Marte will score. Two to nothing, Arizona. Schwarber, a drive into right field. Way back there. So In the air, left center field. That ball's hit well. Both outfielders on the run, and this is going to get down. Real Muto scores the game's tying run. They are loaded with nobody out. And now the sinker ball of Ryan Thompson is coming on. See if Bohm swings at the first pitch. Thompson deals. Bohm does. Bouncing ball. Curiel, Rojas tags, throw to the plate, not in time, 
And two outs. Moreno takes ball four, and the bases are loaded. And if you're Tori Lavello, you cannot have a better matchup than the one you've got right now. Your best power hitter against a rookie pitcher at the tying run at first base. Oh boy, he can set off an explosion here. Yeah. Ooh. It was like let's let's just as an offense like let's let's give our guys a chance to like shut this team down. And you know my job is to split gaps and, and change the score. Walker, did he go? Did not. Ball three. Another spinner. And now to me, I look. It's five-two ball game. Love the big hit. You need a run too. Yeah. Five to three cuts it. I gotta make the young pitcher throw a strike right here. Three and zero. The three zero swing is is it's fun. It's it's a cool mindset because you know it's it's all or nothing. But yeah, I remember uh, I remember thinking, here we go. He deals. Oh, Walker, green lighted three and zero was right on it. But fouls it back. I think a little bit felt like missed an opportunity to, to change the scoreboard, but you know, it, it's, it's tough. Breaking balls, and he deals a fast ball. He missed a bases loaded walk. It's a two run game now. On the ground to third, just missed the bag, and Rivera's gonna go for the tag here. A five unassisted to end the inning. <laughs> Craig Kimbrell entering this game in the eighth inning. You know, Kimbrell has had such a great career that he's done great things in almost every single ballpark. But he has struggled here in his career. Kimbrell fires and a swing and a drive down the left field line. Curiel in the second base with a double. Puede ser una buena condición cuando yo vi que llegué segunda. Yo a ver, no pensé yo decía bueno ah y ti. I was called in like hey like you you might get you know you might pinch hit right here. And now it's going to be Alec Thomas, the speedy center fielder. He's got some pop, a couple of home runs here in the post. You know I got in. To the cage and was working on, you know, in fastballs off the machine. I was not doing good at all. It was terrible. Like I was really bad. And Pavin was was hitting with me. Yeah, well, you're not like feeling the best, you know, in the cage. You just have to resort to just competing and just going out there, throwing all your thoughts out the window. Thomas has a pinch hitter in his career, and it's a brief career. Has done well. Four hits and ten at bats. Once I got called in to to hit, you know, officially. Um, I was like, man, I, this is not going to be good. Roller coaster ride with Craig Kimbrell on the mound. That pitch right there felt like it was right down the middle, but apparently it was a ball, you know, off the plate. But uh, for me, it felt like it was right down the middle. Full count, one out. He deals. Thomas in the air to right field. That's back. where we could have blown the roof off the plane. You could see it on his face running the bases, how exciting that was, and the feeling that, that he just came through for his teammates. 
I was just waiting for him to get to the dugout and hug him and grab him and throw him to the air. It was unbelievable. Man, you talk about big moments in Arizona Diamondback baseball history. That's going to go down as is is one of the one of the greatest. I feel like the whole series just switched from there. In the air, left center. That's going to get down. Once we won that game back home, we had some life, and then we won the second game at home. Um, I think that just kind of carried into the, red, the rest of the, the rest of the series. Going back to Philly, down three two, just. Like I had mentioned like earlier before, like once they get the crowd involved, it's it's a hard place to play from behind. I knew just you know from an, from a watching the game perspective and just an offensive perspective and a pitching perspective, it was like all right, we have to go out, we got to have a shutdown inning in the first and. We just got to punch him in the mouth. We did fly cross country to get our butts kicked. What a damn baseball we have in front of us. The Phillies are the ones in control of this series right now. They're back on their home field. And to borrow an old hockey term from this town, they have been the Broad Street Bullies. It was a winner go home moment, but I was only thinking about the win. Ooh. That's how game six begins. To back case for Aradola. And down he goes. Nola with three Ks. Uh, Schwarber and Harper both walk. Looks like Merrill Kelly has a game plan early. It's a one-two. Sends one deep in the left field, and that one's gonna fly. That ball's hit well in the left field. That one is way back there. Curiel goes deep. Back to back home runs for the Diamondbacks. And a called strike three. Harper takes a called strike three. And two, he got it to chase one. But for the series, the ball pitcher got nasty. Schwarber a swing at him, and Kelly struck him out with a curveball. And he struck him out. Harper chases the curveball, and Merrill Kelly, he is becoming a story here in game six. Yeah, that place is different. Um, that's probably the most hostile sporting event that I think I've ever been a part of. Um, Philly fans are always have that reputation, and they definitely buy into that reputation. They try to make it as uncomfortable for you to play them as possible. That, that guy has ice in his veins. He's his heart rate is is slow all the time. You know, I, I had never heard a ton about Miro. I hadn't seen a ton of him. And then I got to come over and see him, you know, every five days and was like, wow, this guy is the real deal. He just mows people down. When we needed him all year, he was that guy and it just continued to be the case. I always say to my teammate, if we score two, three, when Miro, Gallen, and those guys in the mouth, they got our back. Merrill, like, had just been huge all year. Um, that, that's kind of his thing. You know what you're going to get out of Merrill. You know you're going to get – he's going to keep us in the game. He's going to give him a chance to win. Um, and I, and that's exactly what he did in game six. Um, I, he actually did more than that. He showed up in game six. I said that we get through game six, anything can happen in game seven. Doesn't seem like it right now, but let's not worry about game seven because game sevens are, are special for a reason. And who knows what will happen. The mindset going into that game, like this is, you know, this is it. This is game seven at the Phillies. This is what, you know, you, you think about, you, you dream about. Anything can happen. And it's not, it's not playing the, oh, we, anybody can get lucky. But it's just truly understanding the game and, and understanding that on any given day, anybody can win. Now 
fanático de los Phillies son muy, era muy intenso. Pero nada, no, a mí me gusta, me gustó mucho jugar ahí. Brandon Fott, he has been great in his last two starts. No runs allowed, but this will be as nervous as he could ever be on the mound. I was a nervous wreck, to be honest, but um, I kind of used that as fuel. He didn't show it. I, I was keeping a close eye on him from afar, just watching him out of the corner of my eye. Uh, he seemed like he was business as usual. You could feel it when you got to the park in Game 7 that they were, they were tense. Every, everybody on that side of the field was tense. Everybody in the stands was tense. Once I went out and stepped out of the dugout, I felt like I got booed by 50,000 people because I actually did. And uh, that was crazy. Warming up in that bullpen with them all hanging over the fence, it was, it was one of a kind. And I just remember warming up and saying, get me out of here. Let's, let's go ahead and start this game. I'm ready to roll. The Phillies and the Diamondbacks. The bank is open for business. Two, and down he goes. That's one way to get the fans right into this ball game. Bouncing ball up the middle. No chance to get Carroll. Takes off and the pitch is lined in the right. A base hit. Thing. Broken back, ground ball. A run comes in to score. And the Diamondbacks put one on the board in this first inning. 3-2 to Harper and he got him. Brandon five And the first ball is deep in the left. See you later, Alec Bohm. A solo shot to tie it. Suarez, 2-2. Hey! He sticks the fastball, caught him guessing. Hey! Called strike three. Vaughn rings the bell on Kyle Schwarber. And he sends that one into left center field. That is going to get down, and to the wall it goes. Phillies lead 2-1. One swing of Carroll's bat could flip the scoreboard here in the fifth. Carroll up the middle and a base hit. Rivera round third. He will score the tying run. Got a chance to put the Diamondbacks in front here in the fifth. And Moreno into right field, a base hit. Here comes Carroll. Castellanos has a cannon. Carroll scores. But Moreno delivers the Diamondbacks in front. On both bullpens, a stop. Pulls one, Marte. Pops to his feet, makes the play. Hey, here he comes. In the air to right field. Should be deep enough. Perdomo tags. Castellanos to catch. And Perdomo will score. And Corbin Carroll. It's his game in game seven. His second RBI. He makes it four to two, Arizona. You need your stars to step up in the postseason. That's that happens in every single postseason. You need a full 26-man roster, no doubt. But at the end of the day, if you're going to win big playoff games, your best players have to win them. And Corbin just took over and won game seven for us. And that's why he's one of the best players in the league. And that's not arguable. And that's why we're so excited he's on our team is, is because he, he can change a game by himself. He goes about his business like a vet. Um, if you would have asked me how old I thought he was after just observing him for a week or two, there's no way I would have said 23. You're almost in awe just like how good he is and how like normal like I don't know how to say it but he's just like he's he's just down to earth and you know he goes out there and he just plays his ass off y de verdad tenía dos años en, en postemporada esa fue una de las piezas más importantes que, que tuvimos y, y este orgulloso de él porque yo lo siento como si fuera mi hermano two outs ninth inning Diamondbacks and out away. As quiet as it is here, imagine in Phoenix and Diamondbacks fans everywhere. They were the fastest expansion team to win a World Series in 2001. Trying to go back for the first time since. Last strike, Seawald and Cave fights it off. You know, you know where the lineup is and you, you know, you're doing everything possible to keep uh, Kyle Schwarber has a tight run from standing at the plate. One ball, two strikes, the pinch hitter cave. Seawall to strike away. Here he comes. First of all, you got to trust your, your players. It's all about your players. They're, they're the ones that play. We try to make the best decisions that we can see and put ourselves into. We already know players from the opposing team. We've seen them plenty of times. It's now just becomes trust. One ball, two strikes, the pinch hitter cave. 
Seawall to strike away. Here he comes. Cave, a fly ball to right field over his Carroll. He's got it. And the Arizona Diamondbacks are headed to the World Series. The Diamondbacks have won the National League pennant. And the Fall Classic will return to the desert for the first time in 22 years. I mean, that guy was on fire. I mean, he's definitely not something that would pitch to when he's going as hot as he is. Cada vez que él iba al home play, nosotros nos poníamos a observarlo. La confianza que que tenía, que él tenía y que nosotros teníamos en él. Cada vez que se paraba en el home play era que algo bueno iba a suceder. It's cool when you see a teammate thrive being themselves. It makes you want to do the same thing, and it's it's very motivating. When you're a kid, that's what you that's what you envision in the backyard when you're playing. You know, guys go their their whole career without being able to do that. Four years ago, five years ago, I was I was pitching in Korea. You know, and I and I had envisioned games like that. I had always dreamed of games like that. You take every moment for what it's worth. You don't you don't know if you're going back to the postseason. Deserved it because they did something very very special, not only for themselves and everybody inside of the dugout. But for this entire state of Arizona. We're family underneath that, this roof. Even when the rest of the world doesn't believe in the things that you're saying, <laughs> or the things that you that you believe in, and in those moments, it's, it's just a, a moment together in front of the world that says, you know what, our guys did something good here. Enjoy it. Those hugs were um, they're special to me um, because you never know when you get to do it again. Oh, he got him with a curve. Can't get it. Gone. This ball is way gone. Down the line and gone. And then hits the next pitch to the moon. Fam sends one deep in the left field, and that one's going to fly. That one is way back there. And Curiel goes deep. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. Alec Thomas takes the ride of his life. In the air left center, that's going to get down. And the Diamondbacks have won the National League pennant. I just, I ended up saying um, a connected team is a dangerous team because of what's came to my mind at that time. Um, and, you know, I'd been thinking about our connection. I was feeling a very strong connection. Every time I walked onto the bus to get to get into the, into the clubhouse, I felt like this team was just united. Ooh, yeah. yeah, we made a few additions to last year's team and, and kept that core. And yeah, we're still, we're still young, but People know who we are now, and and I think we're we're looking forward to 2024. Now, 
eh, divertirse con, con, con el campeonato de nosotros. We know we're capable of doing it. We know we're capable of getting there. Just got to come through next time. So happy for our players, for our coaches, our manager, our general manager. I'm so happy for our employees who are the best in the industry, but really for our fans. They stuck with us. They were patient. They were supportive. They were trustworthy when we said we're building something. And now we're back. Snakes alive. Go D-backs. Evan Longoria, um, this is going to be episode five of Snakes Alive, um, I think, and it only took you guys five episodes to give me a call. The memories are so much more dramatic and so much different, you know, in that short, like, month window of the playoffs. Um, and they're just, they're just so much different and they're so much more vivid. Um, so I, I would say that, you know, although it felt short, like those, you know, when you have the kind of run that we had, um, the memories kind of will, will last much, much longer. Even if you make, you know, the best friend you ever made, you know, in the length of a, a six month season, like, um, the playoff stuff is just so much different, you know, being able to play in, in the NLCS, play in the World Series, um, you know, we will we will kind of have that, um, you know, forever. Obviously, we're going to get a ring tonight to, to commemorate it. So um, ultimately, um, you know, we fell a little bit short, but um, I think and I hope that this, um, you know, that that run last year will propel the organization into like, um, you know, a prolonged stretch of, of success. Awesome. Cool. You good? That's it. Cool. Yeah, thank you cool. so much. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you.